Okay, this uh, short video tutorial looks at exercise three in tutorial number four, and that's for topic four, where we're looking at tests of hypotheses about means of one or two samples. And in topic four, the three types of tests we use are all versions of a t-test, t-test of a mean to hypothetical value, t-test for paired samples, and t-test for unpaired samples. So here's Exercise 3, the Zippo drug company claiming that its product clears up dandruff faster than the other leading brand. The question is, do the results of the trial justify abandoning the conventional treatment? First thing to do here is to state some hypotheses. And the prediction or statement by the company is that the number of days treated with Zippo should be less than the number of days with the other brand or the mean days with Zippo is less than the mean days for the other brand. The null hypothesis then is the reverse of that. Mean days with Zippo should be greater than or equal to mean days of the other brand. So far so good but when we go back and look at the actual data that are presented and if we read the description clearly it says there's 16 patients in eight pairs and the pairs have been matched up for age and severity of problem and other relevant characteristics. So this is a situation where we should recognize that we are dealing with paired samples. Patient number one in the new drug is paired up with patient number two in the conventional drug. So it's paired data. When doing a t-test for paired samples, what we actually do is work with the differences. So we calculate the difference between the new drug and the conventional drug for patient one. That's eight minus 10 gives us minus two. For the second pair of patients, 16 minus 20 is minus four and so on for the eight pairs of patients. So we've actually transformed the original two samples of eight observations into one sample of eight observations of differences. And what we do now is we test a null hypothesis about the differences. So the original null hypothesis is turned into a new null hypothesis. The mean difference is greater than or equal to zero. Now, if you think about that, what we're doing is actually testing the original null and the original alternate hypotheses, but in a simpler way. Now, with the data we've got, we can just calculate the mean, standard deviation, and variance. And we use calculator functions to do this so that we have correct numbers to work with. So first of all, I'll punch in those numbers there, calculate out the mean, calculate out the standard deviation and then just square that to get the variance. So the mean difference is minus 1.375. The standard deviation is 1.685. Square that and the variance is 2.839. We can then work out the standard error using the same formula as in uh, exercises one and two. It's the square root of the variance divided by the number of observations. So square root 2.389 divided by 8 is equal to 0.596. And those two numbers, the mean and the variance, are the ones that we need for proceeding with the test. So I've copied those results over here. Mean standard error. And up on the top of the page, oh, I've got the formula for both T and the degrees of freedom. So first of all, calculating T, it's the mean, take away the hypothetical value divided by the standard error. Well, the hypothetical value in this case for a paired T test is simply zero. So that formula there is simply the mean divided by the standard error or minus 2.31. The degrees of freedom measures the size of the test, so that's n8 minus 1 or 7. Finally, we need to 
refer to the statistical tables and I've got the tables here for the T distribution. I've copied again our calculated value of T and degrees of freedom up here for reference. Now this is a one-tailed test because there's only one alternative to the null hypothesis. If the null hypothesis is false then the mean time with the new drug must be shorter than the mean time with the old drug. So we need to use the one tail test row in the table. And we need to go down to degrees of freedom 7, 0.05 column, and the value in the table is 1.895. The value we've calculated is greater than that value. And it is also negative, as it is required to be for this kind of one-tailed test, so we reject the null hypothesis. The rules for one-tailed tests are a little bit complicated, and they are stated in the statistical manual.